in the previous video we have studied plane wave propagation in lossy dielectrics now we will see plane wave propagation in lossless dielectrics lossless dielectrics means uh, it is a perfect dielectric or perfect insulator so in the case of a perfect dielectric we have sigma is equal to zero so that is the condition uh, there is no conductivity at all it is a perfect dielectric so uh, it is a lossless dielectric now we can see how the what uh, what are the simplifications possible in the expressions for propagation constant and intrinsic impedance so let us start from the expression for propagation constant gamma we have studied that gamma square is equal to j omega mu multiplied by sigma plus j omega epsilon this is the general equation and here we will bring our assumption uh, for lossless dielectric sigma is zero so we can substitute that so j omega mu into zero plus j omega epsilon so this will simplify to minus omega square mu epsilon so if you take the square root of this gamma is equal to square root of minus omega square mu epsilon so square root of minus one is j j multiplied by omega into root of mu epsilon and uh, here you can observe one important thing gamma is having only imaginary part you have only imaginary part there is no real part and we have gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta and if you compare these two you can see there is no real part so alpha is zero and beta is given by this one omega into root of mu epsilon okay so these are the two important conditions for lossy sorry lossless dielectric so for lossless dielectric i will rewrite it for lossless dielectric the important relationships are sigma is equal to zero alpha is equal to zero and beta is equal to omega in the root of mu epsilon so uh, alpha is equal to zero has a physical meaning it shows that there is no attenuation okay wave will not undergo any attenuation its amplitude will remain intact while the wave propagates along the medium now we will see what is the uh, modification in intrinsic impedance expression so intrinsic impedance for the lossless medium is eta is equal to first we will start from the general expression j omega mu by sigma plus j omega epsilon this is what we studied for a lossy medium or a general medium here we will bring in our assumptions sigma is zero so j omega mu divided by zero plus j omega epsilon so j will cancel omega will cancel so it simplifies to square root of mu by epsilon this is a real number mu is a real number epsilon is a real number so square root of a real number is again a real number a positive real number mu by epsilon is a positive real number so again square root is a positive real number so there is no um, angle uh, so angle is zero okay it, it is not complex that is what i meant then yeah, uh, this zero degree implies that the E and H fields are in time phase. E and H are in time phase with each other. Okay. They are in the same time phase with each other. When the E field is co crossing zero, H field will also cross zero. When E field attains peak value, H field will also attain peak value. There is no phase difference. So that is another specialty of uh, lossless dielectric and here we can write the expression for e field first i will write the general expression that we have already studied general expression was e0 e raised to minus alpha is a cos omega t minus beta is a ax this was the general expression that we studied here what is the simplification possible we have already seen that for perfect dielectric or lossless dielectric alpha is zero so if you put alpha is zero you will get e, e raise to zero that is one so it is simply e zero cos omega t minus beta is a x this is the modification so there is no attenuation in the amplitude and one more uh, special case is there that is free space free space is actually a special case of lossless dielectric or perfect dielectric in free space you have sigma equal to zero 
free space or vacuum or air you have sigma is equal to zero and you have epsilon is equal to epsilon zero and mu is equal to mu zero so you have to use these two addition conditions for free space other than that all the other situations are same so alpha will be zero and beta will be omega into root mu epsilon that is what we derived here you can put mu zero and epsilon zero and what is root of mu zero epsilon zero what is root of mu zero epsilon zero we have already we have studied that the score. 1 by square root of mu zero epsilon zero is velocity of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second or it is denoted as c so it is omega by c beta is omega by c in the case of lossless dielectric with under free space condition now we will consider the last case that is plane wave propagation in good conductors plane wave propagation in good conductors so in good conductor you have a large conductivity conductivity is very high so sigma will be much larger compared to omega epsilon that is a mathematical condition used so in a problem if you have to identify the material to if you want to check whether the given problem is related to a good conductor first you need to check calculate the ratio sigma by omega epsilon first you evaluate this ratio and check whether it is much larger than unity if so the material is a good conductor if sigma by omega epsilon is very large compared to one then the given material is good conductor okay then the following analysis can be done otherwise uh, it will be either a lossless dielectric or lossy dielectric if sigma is zero it is a lossless dielectric if sigma is not equal to zero but it is not satisfying this condition then it is a lossy dielectric okay so the corresponding analysis has to be used now i have alpha and beta expressions that i derived using uh, in the when we studied lossy dielectric we will see what are the modifications possible so the expression for alpha was omega multiplied by square root of mu epsilon by 2 into square root of 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon the whole square minus 1 this we have derived while we studied uh, low c dielectric and the beta is equal to omega into square root of mu epsilon by 2 into root of 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon the whole square plus 1 okay here what are the simplifications possible if you look at this expression you can see sigma by omega epsilon is appearing here and we have already written here sigma by omega epsilon will be much larger than one will be very a large number compared to one so you can neglect this plus one so and uh, so this square root of one plus sigma by omega epsilon the whole square will be approximately equal to square root of sigma by omega epsilon the whole square so square root and uh, square it will become sigma by omega epsilon okay. then there is a minus one outside sigma by omega epsilon is much much larger than one so this minus one has no role you can discard that so effectively what is uh, written inside this square brackets will be simply sigma by omega epsilon same logic will be used here so this will be also simplified to sigma by omega epsilon so we will rewrite the expression for alpha alpha is omega into root of mu epsilon by 2 and whatever inside that square bracket now simplifies to sigma by omega epsilon similarly for beta this is omega into root of mu epsilon by 2 and uh, this whole thing simplifies to sigma by omega epsilon now you can see that both are equal alpha and beta are equal they are exactly same expressions epsilon will cancel here so you can write omega into root of mu sigma by t here also there is an omega here and one more simplification is possible the square root omega and this omega will cancel you can write it square root of omega mu sigma by 2 so here also you can write square root of omega mu sigma by 2 so alpha and beta are equal for good conductor okay that is one result 
use for doing problems now we will see what is eta for that is eta is equal to square root of j omega mu by sigma plus j omega epsilon now we know that sigma is much much larger compared to omega epsilon so this will be j omega mu by sigma so you can write it like omega mu by sigma angle 90 degree this is angle 90 degree so square root of omega mu by sigma when angle comes under one angle 90 if you take the square root it is again root 1 into 90 by 2 45 degree okay so this simplifies to 45 degree this angle so it shows that in a good conductor the angle of intrinsic impedance is 45 degree it shows that e field and h field are displaced in time phase by 45 degrees in a good conductor okay so e of z t in a good conductor will be e0 e raised to minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z ax and h z t will be magnetic field will be h0 e raised to minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z and this magnetic field will have a 45 degree phase difference it is lagging the e field by 45 degrees because of that 45 degree in the intrinsic impedance okay there is a time phase shift of 45 degree now there is one more definition corresponding to uh, this attenuation that is regarding skin depth here you see that when z increases this e raised to minus alpha z time will come down it will decrease amplitude will diminish as the wave propagates along the z direction so what is the value of z at which the amplitude becomes 37 percentage or e raised to minus 1 times the original value that is defined as skin depth you will repeat skin depth is design, defined as the distance through which when the wave propagates its amplitude will diminish to e raised to minus 1 times the original value okay so the amplitude is h0 e raised to minus alpha z so it should diminish to h0 e raised to minus 1 so the condition is e raised to minus alpha z is equal to e raised to minus 1 or alpha z is equal to 1 or z is equal to 1 by alpha so this particular value of z is defined as skin depth and we will use a notation delta to represent that so delta will be equal to 1 by alpha so 1 a reciprocal of attenuation constant will give you the value of skin depth and uh, al alpha is square root of omega mu sigma by 2 from our previous derivation it is omega mu divided by here it is written oh, alpha is root of omega mu sigma by 2 so i can substitute it here so it will be square root of omega mu sigma by 2 omega is nothing but 2 pi f mu sigma by 2 so this will be root of pi f mu sigma so when the frequency of operation increases skin depth will be very small it means the in a good conductor when the frequency of operation is very high the e field can penetrate only to a very small distance okay uh, it, the amplitude diminishes to 37 percentage in a very small distance so the field will be concentrated on the periphery so the skin effect is more pronounced at higher frequencies now we will uh, continue in the next class we will stop it here thank you